as introverts, it's more nerve wracking for us to do something like public speaking. But the first thing we need to understand is that familiarity breeds comfort. The more we do something like this, like public speaking and going on stage, the more or the less nervous we'll end up feeling, whether we're introverted or not. So we need to make sure that by making it as easy as possible to go on stage those first few times. And that's what we're going to discuss here today. Six things that we can do as introverts to make it as simple as possible to go on stage for those first few times so that we can actually learn to be more comfortable there and slowly amplify our introverted personality on stage. Hey, my name is Radeep and I love learning about effective communications and sharing those learnings with you so that you can level up your communications game as well. Okay, so the very first thing we can do is to try and eliminate as many things that can go wrong when we go on stage. First of which is being okay with taking our notes. We might feel that we have to give a great performance when we give a public speech. We might feel that we should have every word memorized, but it'll be so much easier if we can just take the notes with us. Some of the best speakers in the world take their notes with them when they go on stage. It just mitigates the entire risk of us going completely blank. The worst thing that can now happen is that we just give a not so powerful delivery and that's okay. The next thing to do is that if we have a speech or presentation, we should try and make sure we arrive early at the venue. This enables us to do two things. First, it allows us to greet people who are going to be our eventual audience. So as introverts, we are comfortable in our own bubble. But when we start greeting people, it slowly starts pushing us a little more out of our comfort zone so that when we go on stage, we are already in a slightly more extroverted zone. And the second thing it helps us do is it helps us walk around on stage before the event has even begun. And this is very important and very underrated. When we go on stage, directly without ever having been there and if you're not used to it we'll freeze up in most cases and that's where when those lights shine on us and nervousness hits really hard it happens when we're not used to that particular stage so if we can arrive a little early just walk around a little on the stage when we eventually do go on it to deliver our speech we'll be a lot more comfortable moving on to delivery Delivery is always a question mark. What should I do with my hands? How do I modulate my voice? Can I, should I maintain eye contact? We'll break it down very simply. With our hands, if we don't know what to do with them, just keep them near our belly area. Like just we hold our hands like this at the belly area and we bring them up whenever we need to gesture to something. And to make this very easy, we should only bring our hands up when our hands can complement what it is we want to say with our words. So for instance, if we want to talk about something rising or something moving forward, we simply move our hands in those directions. That's about it. When it comes to voice modulation, now instead of talking in a monotonous tone like this so that the audience falls asleep, we can use something called the pop, drop, and pause method. This simply means popping some words up dropping some words down and pausing before others. Take the sentence, they killed the gardener as an example. Using the pop, drop and pause method, the sentence will become, they killed the gardener. Simple, pretty straightforward. When it comes to eye contact, if we are very nervous about looking people in the eye when we go on stage, like me, we need to give the illusion that we are looking at the audience without actually having to look at them. We can either look at their foreheads or their chins, or we can look at the spaces between the chairs if we are in a larger venue. So as long as we're scanning the room and looking at these areas, we are giving the illusion that we're maintaining eye contact without actually doing so. Point number four, we need to practice. Practice more than required. If going on stage is something that we're not used to, then we should spend more effort in preparation. This doesn't just mean preparing for our speech. It also means practicing public speaking on an everyday basis. It might sound intimidating, but it basically means that every conversation that we have, whether we're talking to a group of friends or to somebody over the phone, all those methods that we spoke about before, the functional gesturing, the pop, drop and pause method, maintaining eye contact with somebody. All these things can be applied in our everyday lives so that when we do go on stage, these things that we tend to practice only when we have to give a public speech tend to become a lot more natural. The next thing is to do things that slowly 
push us out of our comfort zone. These are things like going to networking events, joining a Toastmasters club, getting a coach, taking a course, anything that moves us towards the direction of being a better communicator or public speaker in an environment where it's safe to fail, which is why I'm such a big fan of Toastmasters because you can go out there, deliver as many speeches as you like, not be great at it, forget your lines, and it just doesn't matter. You just come back and try again. And the more environments like these that we put ourselves in, the more at ease we'll feel with the stage because we'll be doing it more often. And the last point is that as introverts, there are many things that are at our advantage. Because we don't like talking too much, we're very comfortable with silences in most cases. And silence is a very powerful tool on stage. Nothing wrong with a little bit of silence and we should use that energy that we have in everyday conversations or in our everyday lives, even on stage. And in most cases, our content will also be better because as introverts, we're usually better listeners because we just simply like the other person speaking. Or actually, we just don't like speaking much ourselves. So automatically, we tend to listen more. And because of that, we might understand the audiences or our listeners' problems a lot better because we've actually put in the time to listen to their challenges. And that's about it. Six things we can do as introverts to become better public speakers. If you have any more questions around things like public speaking, communications, we have an entire website with in-depth articles and resources dedicated just for that. So go check out franticallyspeaking.com. And if you want to watch another entire video we've created on techniques that you can use to overcome stage fright, highly recommend you check that out right here.